सो इन द लास्ट पार्ट वी आर डन विथ एक्यूट कैटरल और म्यूकोप्यूरलन कंजक्टिविटीज सो नाउ लेट्स टॉक अबाउट द सेकेंड टाइप ऑफ बैक्टेरियल कंजक्टिविटीज दैट इज नथिंग बट द मेम्ब्रेनस कंजक्टिविटीज द नेम मेम्ब्रेनस कंजक्टिविटीज इट सेल्फ इंडिकेट्स दैट दिस इज अ टाइप ऑफ कंजक्टिविटीज विच इज कैरेक्टराइज बाय द फॉर्मेशन ऑफ मेम्ब्रेन सो द मेम्ब्रेनस स्टैंड फॉर फॉर्मेशन ऑफ फॉर्मेशन ऑफ मेम्ब्रेन वेर so the membrane will get form on the conjunctiva so there will be a formation of membrane on the conjunctiva so the question arises on which conjunctiva the membrane usually get form so the palpebral conjunctiva is more likely to get infected so the membrane most likely form on the palpebral conjunctiva and in some rare cases the bulbar conjunctiva also get infected so let's talk about the etiology of membranous conjunctivitis so the question arises on which conjunctiva the membrane usually get form so the palpebral conjunctiva is more likely to get infected so the membrane most likely form on the palpebral conjunctiva and in some rare cases the bulbar conjunctiva also get infected so let's talk about the etiology of membranous conjunctivitis usually the membranous conjunctivitis is more likely to be happen in the childrens between the age group 2 to 8 let's go further for the causative agent of membranous conjunctivitis causative agent so in the majority of cases the membranous conjunctivitis occurs due to the infection of corynebacterium diphtheriae so in the majority of cases it will be a corynebacterium diphtheriae so the infection of corynebacterium diphtheriae usually is the responsible for the formation of membranous conjunctivitis and this corynebacterium diphtheriae always present in association with staphylococci and pneumococci so it always been in association with staphylococci and pneumococci but in some of the cases the virulent type of streptococcus hemolyticus can also causes the membranous conjunctivitis in some or rare cases the virulent type of streptococcus hemolyticus can also causes the membranous conjunctivitis so in which modes the infection can occur that is the corn bacterium diphtheriae how it, how it enters into the human organism and further it causes the dangerous that is membranous conjunctivitis so the mode of infection consisting of so in the mode of infection so in the fossil diphtheriae the corynebacterium diphtheriae bacillus can further uh, uh, causes or gain entry into the human organism by the contamination so in the fossil diphtheriae this bacilli that is corynebacterium diphtheriae can gain entry by contamination this is the first point then comes the next point that is in a some cases of nasal diphtheriae that is in the nasal diphtheriae 
the coronabacterium diphtheriae, this bacilli can gain entry through the nasolacrimal duct. So in the nasal diphtheria, it will gain entry from the nasolacrimal duct. And in the most of the cases, the infection may occur from the carrier. So third point, it, in some cases, infection occur from carrier so what do you mean by carrier so carrier is the patient carrier is nothing but the patient but it is a peculiar type of patient so this patient having suppose this is a blood vessel one particular blood vessel of this carrier patient. So this blood vessel contain a coronabacterium diphtheriae inside. So the carrier patient containing the coronabacterium diphtheriae in his blood, but this patient does not showing any signs and symptoms. So signs and symptoms are absent. So in this peculiar case, this carrier patient can transfer the infection to the healthy individual. So in this peculiar condition, this carrier patient can transfer the infection to the healthy individual. So there will be a one more point regarding the spread of infection that is the infection in the diphtheria may usually get transferred through the airborne droplets. When, suppose, this is a patient which is infected, this is the A patient which is infected. So this patient when sneezes or when cough, it releases the mist of contaminated droplets. So this A patient when sneezes or cough, it releases droplets or air droplets. So this droplets usually contains a causative agent causative agent and when this droplets when inhaled by the other healthy individuals when this droplet inhaled by a healthy individuals this causative agent enters into the healthy individual and further there will be a transmission of the infection occur so let's go further towards the classical concept of pathogenesis of membranous conjunctivitis. So again, the anatomy of conjunctiva. So this is the palpebral conjunctiva consisting of three parts. That is marginal conjunctiva, upper dorsal and lower dorsal conjunctiva, and third is that is orbital conjunctiva. So here, this is the inner lid margin. So here, suppose there will be a formation of one particular membrane so at that place usually the membrane get form so how it get form let's talk about the detailed pathogenesis of formation of membrane on the inner margin of the conjunctiva or on the palpebral conjunctiva so for that purpose i will take a small piece from here small piece of cells from here of palpebral conjunctiva so this is a one particular piece of palpebral conjunctiva so this piece of palpebral conjunctiva consisting of two types of cell that is stromal cell for the support and second is that is parenchymal type of cell so the parenchymal type of cells are functional in nature so i have drawn here uh, some parenchymal cells so usually we know that the causative agent for the membranous conjunctivitis is the coronabacterium diphtheriae in majority of the cases. So suppose in fossil diphtheriae, it is enters into the human body through contamination. In the nasal diphtheriae, it enters in our body through nasolacrimal duct. And also there will be a infection of the coronabacterium diphtheriae from the carrier. From this all modes, the coronabacterium diphtheriae further enters into the organ entry into the living organism or human organism 
सपोज दिस इज द कोरोनाबैक्टेरियम डिप्थेरिये एंटर्स इन टू द पालपेबरल कंजक्टिवा और इन अ पीस ऑफ पालपेबरल कंजक्टिवा सपोज दिस इज द कोरोनाबैक्टेरियम डिप्थेरिये हियर हैविंग एंटीजेनिक स्ट्रक्चर्स ऑन इट्स सरफेस सो दिस इज कोरोनाबैक्टेरियम डिप्थेरिये बैसिल है वंस दिस कोरोनाबैक्टेरियम डिप्थेरिये एंटर्स इन टू द पीस ऑफ पालपेबरल कंजक्टिवा इट फर्दर गोज टुवर्ड्स द parenchymal cells as well as stromal cells so this coronabacterium diphtheria goes towards the parenchymal cell and damage this parenchymal cell so this d4 nothing but damaged cell so this coronabacterium diphtheria goes towards damaged cell and once this parenchymal cell get damaged this cell further releases it further releases histamines leukotrienes prostaglandins and all other chemical mediators so once this all chemical mediators get form or get secreted by the damaged cell this chemical mediator further goes towards the blood vessel so there will be a presence of smooth muscles around the blood vessel so these are the smooth muscles so once this histamines leukotrienes prostaglandins and all other chemical mediators goes and binds on the receptors present on the smooth muscles it will further causes relaxation of this smooth muscle so once this smooth muscles get relaxes the arterial end or the artery get dilated and finally there will be a dilatation of the arterial end or artery so once this artery get dilated the more and more amount of blood comes inside the capillaries so once the more and more amount of blood enters inside the capillaries it will exert some more pressure on the walls of capillaries that is nothing but in other words we can say that there will be a increase in the hydrostatic pressure so the hydrostatic pressure is nothing but the capillary blood pressure so there will be a increase of hydrostatic pressure and once this hydrostatic pressure or outward driving force get elevated it will further these are the plasma proteins present inside the blood so this elevated hydrostatic pressure or elevated outward driving force further drives this plasma protein outside the blood capillary or blood vessel so finally there will be a exudation of plasma proteins plasma proteins fibrin strands inflammatory cells many polymorphs occur so finally there will be a exudation of this particular sorts of plasma proteins fibrin strands inflammatory cells and polymorphs occur and there will be a inflammation so all the signs of inflammation that is redness edema hot that is increase in the local temperature and there will be a pain and last there will be a function loss so finally this all exudative fluid that is which containing the plasma proteins fibrin strands inflammatory cells and polymorph so this exudative fluid enters into the interstitial space and finally it will causes edema of the conjunctiva that is nothing but the edema of the palpebral conjunctiva as this exudative fluid is sticky in nature there will be a formation of membrane of mucopurulent discharge or this fluid further forms a membrane on the palpebral conjunctiva and there will be a final form so this membrane finally get forms on the palpebral conjunctiva so this membrane usually consisting of inflammatory cells polymorphs fibrin material as well as plasma protein so this all exudative material forms a membrane on the palpebral conjunctiva and this membrane the characteristic of this membrane is nothing but this membrane is very tough in consistency also 
इट गेट अडेरेंट टू द पालपेबरल कंजक्टाइवा एंड इट इज फॉर्मली अडेर टू द पालपेबरल कंजक्टाइवा एंड सम पार्ट ऑफ दिस मेम्ब्रेन अल्सो इनवेजिनेट द पालपेबरल कंजक्टाइवा सो दिस सम पार्ट ऑफ दिस मेम्ब्रेन इनवेजिनेट दिस पालपेबरल कंजक्टाइवा सो इफ यू डू एनी अटेम्प्ट टू रिमूव दिस मेम्ब्रेन मेकेनिकली इट विल कॉज एस अ ब्लीडिंग बिकॉज इट इज फॉर्मली अडेरेंट एंड टफ इन कंसिस्टन्सी एंड सम पार्ट इज इनवेजिनेट्स इन टू द पालपेबरल कंजक्टिवा सो इन एनी अटेम्प्ट टू रिमूव दिस मेम्ब्रेन इट विल कॉज एस अ ब्लीडिंग इन टू कंजक्टाइवा सो इट विल फर्दर लीड्स टूवर्ड्स अ सीवेरिटी सो अराउंड दिस मेम्ब्रेन दिस पार्ट ऑफ कंजक्टाइवा इन दिस पार्ट ऑफ कंजक्टाइवा देर विल बी अ कोगुलेटिव नेक्रोसिस विल गेट हैपन so the cells around this membrane further get dead and it will form a coagulative necrosis around the membrane once the membrane get form we will go towards the doctor and take a antibiotic treatment so once we take a antibiotic um, measures or antibiotic treatment this membrane starts sloughing off so once this membrane get slough off finally this palpebral conjunctiva get free from this membrane and this membrane get slough off so once we take a antibiotic treatment for the membranous conjunctivitis with the antibiotic treatment this membrane get detached from the palpebral conjunctiva and get slough off so there will be a uh, removal of the membrane and the sloughing off of the membrane with the antibiotic treatment so once this part of palpebral conjunctiva get detached from this membrane the healing process starts in this part of palpebral conjunctiva and finally there will be a complete healing occurs and once the healing process get completed there will be a formation of scar mark so these are the scar mark formation after the healing process on the palpebral conjunctiva so this is how the membrane form into the membranous conjunctivities and with the antibiotic treatment this membrane also get re so finally the clinical course of membranous conjunctivitis may vary from mild cases towards the severe so in the mild cases of membranous conjunctivitis there will be a only presence of inflammatory signs that is nothing but the edema of lids mucopurulean discharge conjunctival type of congestion pain which is in moderate level which is on moderate level and there will be a formation of yellowish white membrane mainly on the palpebral conjunctiva and in some cases on the bulbar conjunctiva so let's see what happen into the severe cases of membranous conjunctivitis in a severe cases of membranous conjunctivitis the clinical course contain a usually three stages first stage is nothing but stage of infiltration second stage is nothing but the stage of suppuration and third stage is nothing but the stage of cicatrization so the clinical course contains a three stages in the severe cases of membranous conjunctiva let's talk about the first stage that is stage of infiltration so this stage of infiltration last for 5 to 10 days so this stage of infiltration last for 5 to 10 days the stage of infiltration usually consisting of first is that is entry of corina bacterium diphtheria in conjunctiva or in palpebral conjunctiva so first event occur that is nothing but the entry of corona bacterium diphtheria in a palpebral conjunctiva or in a conjunctiva second thing which happen in the stage of infiltration that is the occurrence of severe inflammatory response severe inflammatory response against 
दैट पर्टिकुलर बैसिल है और बैक्टीरिया है दैट इज कोरोना बैक्टीरियम डिप्तेरी सो द फर्स्ट थिंग विच इज हैपन इन द स्टेज ऑफ इन्फिल्ट्रेशन दैट इज एंट्री ऑफ कोरोना बैक्टेरियम डिप्तेरी इन द पल्पेबरल कंजक्टाइवा सेकेंड थिंग दैट इज नथिंग बट ऑक्यूरेंस ऑफ सीवियर इन्फ्लामेटरी रिस्पॉन्स अगेंस्ट द कोरोना बैक्टेरियम डिप्तेरी एंड द थर्ड थिंग विच इज हैपन इन द स्टेज ऑफ इन्फिल्ट्रेशन दैट इज there is formation of thick yellowish white membrane on palpebral conjunctiva so finally in this stage of infiltration there will be a formation of thick yellowish white membrane on the palpebral conjunctiva so this membrane is very sticky in nature hence this membrane further causing adhesion of the lids that is adhesion of the lid margins so it causes adhesion of lid margins so again i will recap the stage of infiltration it is last for 5 to 10 days and in this stage of infiltration the first thing which is happen that is nothing but the entry of corona bacterium diphtheria in the palpebral conjunctiva or in the conjunctiva second thing which is going to be happen is nothing but there will be a formation of severe inflammatory response or there is a occurrence of severe inflammatory response against the corona bacterium diphtheria and once the inflammatory response established there will be a formation of thick yellowish white membrane on the palpebral conjunctiva so this membrane is very tough as well as this membrane is very sticky in nature so it will causes the adhesion of the lid margins then comes the second stage that is nothing but the stage of suppuration so in this stage of suppuration there will be a sloughing up of the membrane so suppose this is a lower palpebral conjunctiva this is outer lid and this is inner lid and here there is a eye ball so this is the palpebral conjunctiva having uh, outer lid as well as in the inner lid so the membrane is form on the inner lid suppose this is a membrane which is form in the first stage that is nothing but the stage of infiltration so in the second stage that is stage of suppuration what happen this membrane this membrane get detached from the palpebral conjunctiva that is nothing but the sloughing up of the membrane so this membrane get slough up or get removed or get detached from the palpebral conjunctiva so the conjunctiva finally becomes which is something look like this is the membrane which is get detached from the palpebral conjunctiva so finally once the membrane get detached from the palpebral conjunctiva it leaves the rough granulating surface so these are the granulating surface where further the healing takes place so let's recap the stage of suppuration that is the second stage in this stage of suppuration suppose this is a palpebral conjunctiva having outer lid as well as inner lid this is eyeball so in the stage of suppuration what happen this membrane get detached from the palpebral conjunctiva so here it detachable membrane is seen so here this membrane get detached from the palpebral conjunctiva and it leaves a some granulating surface which are rough in consistency so finally there will be a remnants of the granulating surface on the palpebral conjunctiva third stage is nothing but the stage of cicatrization so the cicatrization means nothing but the wound 
healing. Cicatrization is nothing but the wound healing. In order to form a scar tissues. So the whole healing process of the palpebral conjunctiva is happen in the stage of cicatrization. Cicatrization itself indicates that it is a wound healing in order to form the scar tissue. So whole healing process is happen in a stage of cicatrization. So let's go for the diagnostic criteria for the membranous conjunctivities. So how we can say it is a pure case of membranous conjunctivities. So the true and the pure case of membranous conjunctivities consisting of following features that is the patient may having the history of diphtheria or it may having contact with the carrier. The second feature is nothing but there will be a presence of signs of acute inflammation of the conjunctiva which is very marked. And third diagnostic criteria is nothing but there will be a presence of yellowish white membrane on the palpebral conjunctiva. So once we have a patient with this particular sorts of features then we can diagnose this patient as a membranous conjunctiva. So the severe cases of membranous conjunctivitis further forms the complications. So what are the complications of membranous conjunctivitis? The first is that is corneal ulcers. So, in the corneal ulcers, the yellowish white membrane which is present on the palpebral conjunctiva, this membrane further destroys the corneal epithelium. So, in the corneal ulcers, membrane destroys the corneal epithelium. So, in the corneal ulcers, the membrane which is formed on the palpebral conjunctiva, it will further destroy the corneal epithelium and forms a corneal ulcers. Second complication is that is nothing but the simbleferon. So, what is simbleferon? Simbleferon is nothing but the partial or complete addition of palpebral and bulbar conjunctiva. So, simply the simbleferon is nothing but the addition of palpebral as well as bulbar conjunctiva with one another. The third complication is nothing but the entropion. So what is entropion? Entropion is nothing but the everting of the eyelids. Here in the entropion, the eyelids get evert, but where? Inward. So there will be a everting of the eyelids inward. And last complication is nothing but the conjunctival xerosis. That is nothing but the dryness of the conjunctiva. So this all complications may happen if the severe membranous conjunctivitis case not treated well. So let's go for the last part that is nothing but the management of membranous conjunctivitis. So in the management there is two part that is first is prophylactic part and second is that is nothing but the curative part. So let's go for the prophylactic part first. So in order to take a prophylactic measures to prevent a membranous conjunctivitis we can isolate the patient. So, the main important thing in prophylaxis of membranous conjunctivities is nothing but the isolation of the patient. And the curative treatment consisting of the curative treatment consisting of solution of crystalline penicillin. So, we can treat the patient of membranous conjunctivities with the solution of crystalline penicillin 10,000 units per cc of the water 10,000 unit per cc of water which is distilled also we can give an intramuscular injection of crystalline penicillin that is IM injection of crystalline penicillin but the 50,000 units of the crystalline penicillin IM that is intramuscular but given twice per day so we can give the solution of crystalline penicillin having a 10,000 units per cc of or, or distilled water and we can also give the intramuscular injection of crystalline penicillin 
having the 50,000 units twice per day. The second intramuscular injection for the treatment of membranous conjunctivitis is nothing but the injection that is anti-dipteric serum. I am injection of anti dipteric serum it also has 50,000 unit but this intramuscular injection that is anti dipteric serum has to be repeat at a 12 hours that is repeat at 12 hours so let's recap again treatment so treatment consisting of prophylactic as well as curative part in prophylactic there will be a, a isolation of the patient and in the curative treatment we can give a crystalline penicillin solution having 10,000 units per cc of distilled water and we can give uh, intramuscular injections the intramuscular injection of crystalline penicillin 50,000 units twice a day and also we can give the intramuscular injection of antidipteric serum having 50,000 units and it has to be repeat at a 12 hours in a case of corneal ulcers, so in a corneal ulcers, we can use the atropine sulf twice a day. So in a corneal ulcers, we can use the ointment of atropine sulf. Atropine sulf. This atropine sulf has to take twice per day.